I'm Dr. Anna Dale. I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. In Nicomachean Ethics, Book 10, Chapter 6, Aristotle summarizes previous points in his argument. This video will give an explicit reconstruction of his reasoning for one conclusion, that happiness is an activity, not a state. Putting this argument into strict logical form will give us a model process to use for analyzing Aristotle's other arguments in Book 10. Here is the relevant section. We said, then, that it is not a state, since if it were, it might be possessed by someone asleep all his life, living a vegetable existence, or someone suffering the greatest misfortunes. So if this is implausible, we should put it rather in the class of activities, as we said above. Step one in our process is to replace all the pronouns in this argument with their reference in order to make Aristotle's claims crystal clear. Doing so, we get this. We said, then, that happiness is not a state, since if happiness were a state, happiness might be possessed by someone asleep all his life, living a vegetable existence, or someone suffering the greatest misfortunes. So if this is implausible, we should put happiness rather in the class of activities, as we said above. We face a problem now. What does the word this refer to in the final sentence? The answer is, it refers to the previous claim, that happiness might be possessed by someone who was asleep all his life, or who was suffering great misfortune. Filling this in, we get this version of the argument. We said, then, that happiness is not a state, since if happiness were a state, happiness might be possessed by someone asleep all his life, living a vegetable existence, or someone suffering the greatest misfortunes. So if happiness being possessed by someone asleep or suffering greatly is implausible, we should put happiness rather in the class of activities, as we said above. Step two of our process is to reorder the argument in premise-premise-conclusion form. Doing so, we get this. Premise one. If happiness were a state, then happiness might be possessed by someone asleep all his life or by someone suffering greatly. Premise two. It is implausible or false that happiness might be possessed by someone asleep all his life or suffering greatly. Conclusion. Happiness is not a state. When we analyze this argument, what we find is that we are given a hypothetical premise. If A, happiness is a state, then B, happiness would be possible for the sleeping or the suffering. And we're told that B is false or implausible. In other words, we're told that not B is actually the case. Therefore, we conclude not A must follow. The form of this argument is modus tollens, and it is a valid argument form. Therefore, it is sound if both premises are true. So, a final question. Are premises 1 and 2 both true? Do you see any good reason to accept or reject either of them? This is what Aristotle's argument depends upon at this point. There is an additional step in the argument, however, because Aristotle goes from his negative conclusion that happiness is not a state to an affirmative conclusion that happiness is an activity. Here's the argument for that. Premise 1. Happiness is not a state. Conclusion. Happiness is an activity. Now what is the missing premise? It must be something that forces us to choose between two options only. Happiness is either a state or an activity. In other words, there can be no third option. So, premise 1. Happiness is not a state. Premise 2. Either happiness is a state or happiness is an activity. Conclusion, happiness is an activity. This argument is, has the form of a disjunctive syllogism, and it is valid. Therefore, it is sound if both premises are true. Now, premise one is true by the previous argument, if we accepted it. So, a final question. Is premise two true? Do you see any good reason to accept or reject it? Because this is what Aristotle's argument depends upon at this point, whether you accept or reject that premise. I hope you've benefited from this exercise in putting an argument into strict, explicit, logical form. Aristotle argues for many more conclusions in this chapter and beyond. Try to use this two-step process on each of them. Step one, replace pronouns with their reference, and step two, 
rewrite and reorder the argument in premise-premise-conclusion form. Add any missing premises or terms as needed. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.